Hello amateurs, what is wrong with that image? I guess depending on your point of view there could be many many things but the thing I want to focus on in this video is the colour of the shirts that Scotland and France are wearing. You see this game was played at Murrayfield, home of Scotland, and Scotland are wearing their home kit. The first time in over 75 years that that has happened with France, the away team, wearing their alternate white kit. And what does it matter? What does it really matter? Does it matter to you? Does it matter to me? Is it just a, a tradition that maybe doesn't deserve to carry on? You know, is it, is it important? Does it, is it important to potential new fans of the game? That's what we're going to dig into in this episode. Uh, so let's get on with it. This all came about following an article in The Telegraph that went into a bit of depth about the kit changes for this year's Six Nations and beyond. And this tradition harks back to the amateurs days of rugby when it was more likely that the home team would have a spare kit hanging around if there was a, a, a kit clash. And it was just a nice sign of hospitality really to uh, welcome the opposition team and not ask them to change kits. And, and, and this continues in the community game to this very day. But not in the pro game. In the pro game, the away team changes to their alternative or third choice kit, uh, depending on colour clashes, etc. Now, an interesting point for me was, when did this happen? Because I actually I don't remember it. So therefore, is tra the tradition that important to me if I kind of watched that happen without really noticing it? Maybe it isn't. However, the Telegraph article went on to describe you know, decisions made by executives which talked about the home team really getting all the home advantages that they can get, and that includes wearing their home kit. And that made me think, oh, what kind of advantage is that really? Like, when I was playing, I never felt it was an advantage to wear our home kit. It was just, it was just a thing. And in fact, we made up several sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of mind tricks or um, psychological ploys to, to make us be really excited about playing in our away kit. We used to call them the lucky whites quite often. And so it's just a question to you. And let's have your answers down in the comments. Like, do you consider wearing your home kit to be an advantage? Don't know. I never did, but maybe you do. The executives went on to say it's a modernising of the protocol which immediately kind of made me just, that brought something up in me, which is not ideal. You know, why? Why, why does it need to be modernised? If there's a good reason, if there's a commercial reason, if there's, um, I don't know, a logistical reason, if there's a good reason for it, then fine. But just to say it's a modernising of the protocol, is it modernising or is it homogenising, where we're just trying to get everything to look the same? And I don't know, I like the fact that rugby's got some traditions, some things that make it different and some stories behind why we do things. So I'm not sure about that phrase. The article goes on. With unions increasingly conscious of rugby's need to attract more casual viewers. Right, OK, well, I agree with that in principle. I'd love to have more people watching rugby. It's, you know, it's my favourite sport, obviously. And... Um, you know, if we can get more viewers, brilliant. It can grow the game, bring in more money and hopefully grow it in a sustainable way. All of those things are great. But is it really confusing to a casual viewer for the home team to be wearing an away kit? I'm not sure it really is. I actually think it would make an interesting conversation point that might bring more people in. So if there's data on that, like I'd love to understand that a little bit more. A kind of similar comparison might be to American sports where the away team is listed first in the, in the schedule. So, for example, it would be like the New England Patriots at the Kansas City Chiefs, where the Kansas City Chiefs are the home team. And again, I find that interesting. You know, it's, it's different. It's interesting. And it, and it begs a question, which um, can only be a good thing. That, by the way, started from baseball because the away team always used to bat first and therefore were listed first. You know, so... Again, no still interesting thing which I didn't know about until I started investigating this. So what do you think? You know, do we need to really cling on to these traditions? Do we need to really try and make sure that we don't lose all these interesting little things from our game? Or have we already lost so many that losing another one doesn't really matter? 
I'd like to hang on to this, but obviously that decision's already been made. What do you think? And I'd also be interested to know how old you are as well. So if you write a comment, do me a favor and write your age or, you know, decade, maybe, you know, 40s or whatever in the comment as well. So we can just kind of get an idea about whether it's I'm just an old fart and trying to cling on to old ideas or whether it's, you know, youngsters, modern uh, people just think it's just the next way. And while you're down there, have a word about the names on the back of the shirts as well, because, you know, that's a modernization, which I agree with, because I can see the commercial benefit of it. And um, yeah, I'm all for it. So um, we'll wrap that one up here. But I'm really interested to see what you think. Uh, is this modernizing? Or is it homogenizing? Till next time, get out and play.